breaking the chains, the battle against the family altar. In the heart of the bustling city, the Harrington family lived in a sleek home. Their lives seemed ordinary but with lots of unforeseen circumstances and unknown predicament, David, a software engineer, Sophia, a teacher, and their teenage daughter, Grace. But beneath the surface, a sinister force lurked, the family altar. Greetings the great queen of our fathers. Welcome my son, what have you brought for the gods of your fathers today? Trust me, I brought the fattest cow in my farm and the best fruits and vegetables for our great deities. I hope they accept and bless my farm products and family. Sure they will, but, you need to do one thing first. What is it my queen? For the gods of our lands to protect you and your family, including your crops, you will need to raise an altar in your house. So that they will be there always to protect and defend you and your family. Is that all? No, that's not all. You must make sure you appease the gods and give it your best sacrifice every morning. And also, your best of the best in your farmland, every last days of every month. That's no problem. As far as the gods will protect me, my family and my crops. I don't mind raising the altar for it in my house. One more thing. What again my queen mother? You must ensure that the altar raised in your home is sacred and that the gods will never go hungry. Even when you're gone, you must ensure that someone from your family, most preferable your first son, must take over from you and worship, serve and appease the deity gods. What if, my first son is not interested? Or what if my family in the future choose not to serve the deity, or stop worshipping the gods of our land, and chooses to destroy the gods in our altar? Then I'm afraid, they will all start dying like chickens. They will suffer generational stronghold and stagnation. They will work and never see the prophets. They will suffer mysterious sickness and diseases. The ladies in your family will find it difficult to marry, even if they do, they will find it difficult to bear children. While your sons will become useless and suffer setbacks which will lead them to many crises including marriage crisis. So I will advise you think about it before you take the deity home. Because, it's going to be from generation to generation. I don't care what happens. I am ready to serve the deity with the members of my family. I am ready to take the gods of our ancestors home. I am capable of convincing my entire family of serving the gods of our land. And I believe they will agree with me to raise an altar for the gods in our home. Especially when they see the benefits it will bring to our home. Are you sure? Yes, I am 100% sure. Fine then, please follow me. So you can carry the gods you wish to serve, to your house. I can't believe I was dreaming. That dream looks so real. But wait a minute. I think the face of that man in my dream looks familiar. It looks so much like my husband's father. Oh my God. I think God is trying to reveal something to us. Because I understand my husband has traveled for a so-called cleansing in the village. But, wait a minute. Why are they always going for this soon called family cleansing every month? Is it that, their family is going through a spiritual battle I know nothing of? Because, what the old woman mentioned in the dream is what is affecting my husband and his entire family. I just hope they are not suffering the sins and calamity of their forefathers' actions. If not, why is all this problems here and there? Why are people dying in his family every month? Why are there stagnation, suffering diseases and so on? The time is already 5.30 a.m. Hmm, it better not be what I am thinking of. Because, this dream is sending a very sensitive and important message. Oh my god, I feel so tired. I better pray and call my husband later to find out what is going on with his family. I believe something is not just right somewhere. Chapter 1, The Unseen Shackles. The Harringtons were unaware of the ancient covenant tied to their lineage. 
Generations ago, their ancestors had erected an altar to a forgotten deity, a god of greed and oppression. This altar, hidden in the shadows, held sway over their lives. It whispered curses, stifled dreams, and perpetuated suffering. Exodus 20, 5 NIV states that, You shall not bow down to idols or worship them, for I, the Lord your God, am a jealous God, punishing the children for the sin of the parents to the third and fourth generation. I better pray for my husband and daughter as they spend time in the village. And I think it will be wise I pray against the dream I had. I just hope God opened my eyes to understand this dream he has exposed to me. I don't care whatever is going on that we don't know of, God will surely deliver us. Lord Jesus, I want to thank you for another beautiful day. I bless your holy name for keeping me and my family alive today. Lord, I know that you are our protector and you will come to our aid. I ask that you will rescue us from those who would harm us. Please give me the strength and courage to stand up against their false accusations and to fight for justice for my family. In Jesus' name, Amen. Oh, I have a missed call from my husband. How come I am just seeing it now? I better call him back. I hope all is well. Hey honey, I am sorry I missed your call. Hope everything is fine. Hello honey. Yes, I called earlier. I hope you are okay. Okay, that's fine. Grace is fine. But guess what? Tonight it was stormy in the village, so our daughter decided to read some books my father had left in his shelves before he died. Our daughter Grace stumbled upon an old family journal. Its yellowed pages revealed secrets, the sacrifices made at the altar, the blood spilled, and the promises forged. Fear gripped her heart. She sensed the invisible chains that bound this family. So she called me and showed me the journal. It was full of scary revelation and currently, I am the only one with our daughter in the village, the others have left and I don't know how to relate this to them. Oh my goodness. So this what my dream's all about. Yes, I got the revelation and I asked God to make us understand what the dream is all about, and he just did. But, don't worry, I have confided in our pastor pastor, Pastor Daniel. He knew the battle we faced. He said that, the evil altars weren't relics of the past, they thrived in the present. Pastor Daniel shared stories of deliverance, of families breaking free from generational curses. He said I should invite him immediately you and Grace gets back from the village. He has promised to follow us to the village to break every altar raised in your father's house. Really? Wow. That's good to hear. Well, no worries, we will leave the village first thing tomorrow morning. I am glad all the mysterious things, sickness, stagnation and so on is adding up now. Daddy, please come inside. I am so scared. Good night honey. I got to go. Oh, is that my daughter? Please tell her everything will be fine. Good night my love. Mr. and Mrs. Harrington, the hour has come for us to pray. But before we do that, I will like to tell you things God revealed to me. But first, is there anyone in your family currently serving this deity? No pastor. We all refused to worship it. Not until it started killing us in our family. And we started facing mysterious problems. So for the problems not to take serious effect on us, we have to always travel to the village for some sort of family cleansing. Except for my wife who kicked against it because she doesn't know why we are going for such cleansing, because I hid our family secret from her, not until my daughter stormed on our family secret book about the blood sacrifices and all that. That's sad but that's nothing to worry about because we are going into a midnight vigil to destroy this deity. As the pastor and the Harringtons gathered in the village living room, the pastor exposed the revelations God has shown him before coming. God wants you to understand what an evil altar is, he said it's a place where many evil things are projected into people's lives, such as infirmities, curses, and failures, among other things. Evil altars are the rooms of powers of the enchanters and diviners and also a place where the wicked consults their gods. First of all, can I tell you what you don't know about evil altar? Please do pastor. Evil altars are set up as inhabitation of the drinker of blood and eaters of flesh. 
It is a place where blood is shed. It can hinder the family's progress. It is a place of wickedness. It is a place where destinies are summoned. It is a gateway for satanic attacks. Evil altars give demons access to your foundation. It is a place where the destiny of a person is turned to shame. Evil altars can be an avenue where they programmed untimely death, sickness, poverty, disappointments, stagnation, begging, sorrow, etc. How do we destroy the family altar raised in my family? Please help us, Pastor. Yes, Pastor. Please help us because everything you mention now is what our family is facing currently. We are tired of the monthly cleansing just because we don't want to worship a generational gods and deity. We are going through a lot. Pastor Daniel led them in prayer, invoking the blood of Jesus. They confessed sins, renounced the covenant, and declared war on the unseen enemy. The room crackled with spiritual energy. O Lord, your children has renounced this deity and have confessed their sins before you. Please Lord, set them free from all the generational stronghold and curses placed against them for rejecting this evil gods. Heavenly Father, Righteous Judge, I ask that the courts of heaven be seated according to Daniel 7, 9 to 10. I ask this in Jesus mighty name. It is written, I kept looking until thrones were set up, and the Ancient of Days God took his seat, his garment was white as snow and the hair of his head like pure wool. His throne was flames of fire, its wheels were a burning fire. A river of fire was flowing and coming out from before him, a thousand thousands were attending him, and ten thousand times ten thousand were standing before him, the court was seated, and the books were opened. Amen. Amen. Heavenly Father, I am requesting the privilege of standing before the courtroom of the Ancient of Days according to what was revealed to the prophet Daniel, in Jesus' name, I pray. Heavenly Father, I stand in your royal courtroom because of the blood and finished work of Jesus on the cross. I have come to receive your righteous judgment over this family, against the spirit and altar of witchcraft that Satan planted in their generational bloodline. Heavenly Father, I call upon your holy angels to be witnesses to my lawsuit and righteous prosecution of the evil altar of witchcraft. I decree and declare that this evil altar of witchcraft will not destroy them or their entire family members nor stop them from pursuing their God-given destiny here on earth, in Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Amen. Heavenly Father, your word in 1 John 2, 1 2 says, My little children, these things I write to you, so that you may not sin. And if anyone sins, we have an advocate with the Father, Jesus Christ the righteous. 1 John 2, 1 to 2, and he himself is the propitiation for our sins, and not for ours only but also for the whole world, NKJV. I thank you that Jesus is my faithful advocate before the righteous judge in the courts of heaven. Lord Jesus, I surrender my rights to self-representation and summon you as my advocate to help me plead my case before the righteous judge and prosecute the evil of altar of witchcraft that Satan planted in this family bloodline. I also ask the Blessed Holy Spirit, who is the highest officer of the courts of heaven here on earth, to make me sensitive to the proceedings of this court in order to successfully prosecute the evil altar of witchcraft fighting against this family in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Heavenly Father, even as we stand in your royal courtroom I present this family as a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable before you according to Romans 12, 1. Heavenly Father, Righteous Judge, I summon the altar of witchcraft in their bloodline and the idol that sits on it to appear in your royal courtroom to face prosecution in Jesus' name. Amen. For it is written in 1 Corinthians 6, 3, which states that, Do you not know that we believers will judge angels? How much more then, as to matters of this life? Heavenly Father, I exercise my God-given authority in Christ Jesus to judge demons and principalities, in Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Righteous Judge, it is also written in the constitution of your kingdom in 1 John 3, 8, stating that, for this purpose the Son of God was manifested, that he might destroy the works of the devil, NKJV. 1 John 3, 8. Amen. Amen. Heavenly Father, Righteous Judge, I now ask that a divine restraining order and a permanent injunction against the spirit and altar of witchcraft in this family would now be issued on by the authority of your Supreme Court, in Jesus' name. Heavenly Father, I decree and declare that any form of witchcraft, whether it be white or black magic or enchantments the devil has issued or is orchestrating against this family are now cancelled in Jesus' glorious name. Heavenly Father, I receive this divine restraining order and permanent injunction by faith, in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. For it is written in the constitution of your kingdom in Hebrews 11, 6, But without faith it is impossible to walk with God and please Him, 
for whoever comes near to God must necessarily believe that God exists and that he rewards those who earnestly and diligently seek him. I believe and declare by faith that the spirit and altar of witchcraft in this family has been judged, in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Now we are going to pray against every evil altar in this family. Please follow me as we step out to the place God has led me. Pastor, why did you bring us here? It's our forefathers' farmyard and it's where they were buried. Don't be afraid for this is where the Lord led me to pray. He says the evil altars that BIS troubling your entire family is long abandoned here and its name is A-B-I-D-O-S-H-A-K-A-R. Abidoshikar. Yes, I can feel its evil presence. Please step aside I have a business to do. As they prayed, the atmosphere shifted. Shadows wreathed, and the air thickened. Pastor Daniel's voice rose. Altar of darkness, your time is up. We break your power. We declare freedom. The room trembled. Grace felt the weight lift. The family altar cracked, its malevolent grip weakening. Anything done against this family under demonic anointing be nullified, in the name of Jesus. I curse every local altar fashioned against the Harrington's family, in the name Jesus. Let the hammer of the Almighty God smash every evil altar erected against the entire Harrington's family, in the name of Jesus. O Lord send your fire to destroy every evil altar fashioned against this family, in the name of Jesus. Every evil priest ministering against the Harrington's family at the evil altar, receive the sword of God, in the name of Jesus. Let the thunder of God smite every evil priest working against the Harrington's family at the evil altar and burn him to ashes, in the name of Jesus. How dare you? Do you know how long I have been in this family? I don't care. I want you out of this compound now. No, I am not going anywhere. I am going to destroy them all for abandoning me. Their forefathers promised me their souls and destinies. Not anymore you demons from the pit of hell. Now your time is up. Let every satanic priest ministering against this family at evil altars fall down and die, in the name of Jesus. Any hand that wants to retaliate or arrest this family because of all these prayers I am praying, dry up and wither, in the name of Jesus. Every stubborn evil altar priest drink your own blood, in the name of Jesus. I possess everything single possession stolen by you demons of this evil altar, from this family in Jesus' name. Congratulations my Harringtons, the evil altar has been destroyed. For real, so we are finally free pastor. Yes my friend, the yoke is broken, Abadoshikar is destroyed. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Now listen, we have to gather your entire family for a general prayer and fasting. Once that is done, then we will replace this altar with a family altar for Jesus Christ. Leave that to me. I will get them informed as soon as possible. In the days that followed, the Harringtons thrived. David received a promotion, Sophia's pay that was stagnant for years was increased, and Grace's dreams to travel and study in one of the best universities came to pass. The entire Harringtons family were prospering and blossoming. The curse was broken, but they remained vigilant. Remember, evil altars could rise again if left unguarded. Psalm 34, 17 NIV, the righteous cry out, and the Lord hears them, he delivers them from all their troubles. The Harringtons raised a godly altar and continued praying for the progress in their family and God has been so faithful to them. The Harringtons vowed to teach their descendants. They shared their story, warning others of hidden altars. Families gathered, prayed, and dismantled the chains. The city changed one liberated family at a time. And so, the modern battle raged on the clash of altars, the clash of destinies. The Harringtons stood firm, their faith unyielding. May we all learn from the Harringtons to confront the unseen, break the chains, and reclaim our God-given destinies. Story by Quincy Onyakachi Okoy Oragwa. If you enjoyed this video, please kindly subscribe to my YouTube channel, hit the like button, leave a comment and don't forget to share. Thanks for watching.